but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Hi there, my name is Steve. Uh, I mean Greg. Yeah, my name's not Steve, because actually I'm not a fish. Um, neither do I identify as a fish. However, I do identify as somebody with a full head of hair, as you can see. And I've got these, these lovely long locks of uh, curly brown hair, shoulder length, right? Um, and uh, if you tell me that I am delusional, and that I am chasing after uh, uh, stupidity, and that I should love myself for who I am, then that makes you a bigot and I will um, proceed to have a temper tantrum and I may or may not violently rearrange the furniture. So what I am doing today is I want to make a video, which I thought about making a video of this like a very, very long time ago, uh, showing exactly why the mass media, the corporate run media is a bunch of crap and uh, they think you're stupid and they're counting on you being stupid. And not only that, but uh, the politicians are also counting on you being stupid. So this all stems from the whole uh, calling Nazis fine people and uh, the whole, you know, uh, fine people on both sides and how it's a big, huge hoax. Uh, this came from 2017 and uh, this, this was uh, involving the Charlottesville incident in which uh, they were protesting the taking down of a uh, Robert E. Lee monument. Uh, Robert E. Lee, if you don't live in America, was the Confederate general who actually was opposed to slavery. <laughs> he was actually an abolitionist, and you look it up and read what he said, that he was actually against slavery. So uh, it just kind of sheds life on the whole, the whole, uh, uh, nuance between the North and the South and how uh, not every Southerner was pro-slavery and that maybe the Civil War was not exactly fought over slavery as uh, people would like you to believe. Anyhow, uh, this, was, this event was uh, stirred up by a bunch of uh, neo-Nazis and actually a whole bunch of Ukrainians who uh, got involved, and uh, the whole Tiki Torches, uh, blood and soil chanting and all that kind of stuff was directly what the neo-Nazis in the Ukraine did, uh, and of course the CIA, and I'm talking about like the, the neocons and the Obaminists alike, had the CIA uh, f prop up a color revolution to get rid of the, um, what's his name? Um, uh, Viktor Yanukovych, who was the duly elected president of Ukraine, and he wanted to say no to companies like Monsanto, and he also wanted to say no to uh, the IMF, and basically uh, corporate uh, uh, American corporations, and he wanted to instead have uh, solid relations with their neighbor Russia. So um, there was the whole Euromaidan, and you know I've I've gone into. Uh, detail about this in a previous video about Ukraine, but uh, basically um, the American-backed puppet Poroshenko was put in charge and then the, the genocide commenced. So it's just really interesting how uh, the, the leftists, um, I'm talking about the, the politicians and, and the voters alike, how they want to send like but hundred godzillion dollars to Ukraine and uh, to, to fund the, the Nazis there, while the victims of like Maui and like North, uh, was it North Carolina or whatever, where there was the hurricane, they only get like 750 bucks after having their, their houses destroyed, right? So um, with that much money, you can buy a Nintendo Switch and a bunch of games, and you can enjoy playing that in your car now that you're homeless, assuming you even have a car. Anyhow, I digress. So basically, the there were in, there were there were Ukrainian instigators in that, and the whole tiki torches and all that crap and all the angry faces. It was like identical to what happened in the Ukraine. Okay, so they they had that happen, and that was like the first night, and then the the second day is when there was the uh, the general protest, and then that's when there was that. 
that uh, guy with the car who crashed in and actually uh, uh, plowed into the, the group of people and that one girl was killed. And it's interesting, I, had, I wish I had saved it, but there was a video of a guy who had, uh, he was in a cafe and he was sitting there looking out the window and these, these buses pulled up and there were like uh, like these uh, 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 neo-Nazis or KKK type people and Antifa people getting off the same buses and uh, infiltrating and then there was like that the chaos that ensued and uh, this is a guy who was actually he was a black guy and um, he was just had this video and he uh, he witnessed that happening um, unfortunately he didn't take a video of it himself but you know take that as you will so there was the incident in Charlottesville, Charlottesville and the media was focusing on the the neo-nazis and such and they were completely ignoring the the leftists who had attacked the the neo-nazis and such right so um i, I really couldn't care less about neo-nazis however i do believe that they should have the right to to speak their mind i am not from germany for example although i do not like the kkk you know i i'm married to a japanese girl myself um i, I don't you know, I just, they have the right to say what they want to say, I suppose. I don't care. It used to be a rather liberal idea of allowing everybody free expression and the right to, to say what they want, right? Um, even though, like, a, given any uh, KKK group, like, probably uh, at least a third of them are, are in infiltrators by the, you know, federal agents or whatever, um, as has been proved time and time again. Um, Again, I digress. So there was that incident in Charlottesville, and ever since then, the media has pushed this propaganda that Trump had called neo-Nazis fine people, that racists were fine people, when it, in, in fact, he said the very opposite, okay? Now, Snopes even debunked this hoax which is really interesting because they sure took their sweet ass time to do so uh the deal is snopes okay in the in the early or mid 90s or so right in the wild west days of the internet snopes was really fun right uh you can go there and they had like uh, uh they would do research on like for example like uh, the pedophilia in disneyland or like the fact that like uh, people uh, even though they die at Disneyland, they're not actually pronounced dead until they get to the hospital by, by the coroner or whatever, because they just, um, that's just the, the Disney, that, that's how they operate. A lot of uh, exposing dark secrets of Disney back in the, like 1996 or so, and that was just really cool when I first discovered that website. Over time, they became just basically leftist propaganda. People may not know that uh, Snopes was basically this... Uh, uh, married couple and their incredibly obese cat and you know big fat kitties are really cute and you just want to just you know stroke their tummy tummies and and uh you know, give them little kitty kisses and all that but uh, when they get that big they can't lick their ass and then they just become like stinky and their their hair gets all knotted up and you have to keep cutting it off with scissors and the while the cat's hissing at you and can't lick his ass so he just drags his ass across the carpet in the middle of the night and all that um again i guess i'm uh going off topic uh, actually uh what the the snopes I, th I guess they got a divorce or something I, if i remember right the guy was spending money on call girls or something like that so it's just the guy and uh, the big fat kitty cat and but in june they finally debunked this right i think maybe the, the article could have been written by the cat i'm not sure maybe the cat got sick of all the, the leftist stuff however that was just like right in time for the trump biden debate in which biden again repeated the same lie about trump calling uh racists fine people now i don't live in america and i don't like the conservative news or the liberal news because i think they're just two sides of the same coin you're, you're not going to uh, hear any truth about you know, like september 11th coming from uh, either the you know cnn or fox news right so 
um, they, they can both uh, uh, go away as far as I care. Uh, so anyhow, I'll take you to like the, this, I think this was the date of the car accident in, in which that girl was killed. So check this out. But we're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. It's been going on for a long time in our country. Not Donald Trump, not Barack Obama. This has been going on for a long, long time. It is no place in America. What is vital now is a swift restoration of law and order and the protection of innocent lives. No citizen should ever fear for their safety and security in our society. And no child should ever be afraid to go outside and play or be with their parents and have a good time. I just got off the phone with the governor of Virginia, Terry McAuliffe, and we agreed that the hate and the division must stop, and must stop right now. We have to come together as Americans with love for our nation and true affection, uh, really, and I, I say this so strongly, true affection for each other. The next day. But based on the events that took place over the weekend in Charlottesville, Virginia, I would like to provide the nation with an update on the ongoing federal response to the horrific attack and violence that was witnessed by everyone. I just met with FBI Director Christopher Wray and Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The Department of Justice has opened a civil rights investigation into the deadly car attack that killed one innocent American and wounded 20 others. To anyone who acted criminally in this weekend's racist violence, you will be held fully accountable. Justice will be delivered. As I said on Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And as I have said many times before, no matter the color of our skin, we all live under the same laws. We all salute the same great flag. And we are all made by the same almighty God. We must love each other, show affection for each other, and unite together in condemnation of hatred, bigotry, and violence. We must rediscover the bonds of love and loyalty that bring us together as Americans. Racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. We are a nation founded on the truth that all of us are created equal. We are equal in the eyes of our Creator. We are equal under the law. And we are equal under our Constitution. Those who spread violence in the name of bigotry strike at the very core of America. Day three. Why, why did you wait so long? I didn't wait long. Why, why did I didn't wait long. I didn't wait long. I, didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct, not make a quick statement. The statement I made on Saturday, the first statement, was a fine statement. But you don't make statements that direct unless you know the fact. It takes a little while to get the facts. You still don't know the facts. And it's a very, very uh, important process to me. And it's a very important statement. So I don't want to go quickly and just make a statement for the sake of making a political statement. I want to know the facts. If you go back to my, in fact, I brought it. I brought it. I brought it. As I said on, remember this, Saturday, 
We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then I went on from there. Now, here's the thing as to, excuse me, excuse me. Take it nice and easy. Here's the thing. When I make a statement, I like to be correct. I want the facts. This event just happened. In fact, a lot of the event didn't even happen yet as we were speaking. This event just happened. Before I make a statement, I need the facts. So I don't want to rush into a statement. So making the statement when I made it was excellent. In fact, the young woman who I hear is a fantastic young woman, and it was on NBC, her mother wrote me and said through, I guess, Twitter, social media, the nicest things. And I very much appreciated that. I hear she was a fine, really, actually, an incredible young woman. But her mother on Twitter thanked me for what I said. And honestly, if the press were not fake, and if it was honest, the press would have said what I said was very nice. But unlike you, and unlike, excuse me, unlike you and unlike the media, before I make a statement, I like to know the facts when you say the alt-right. Uh, define alt-right to me. You define it. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying, uh, no, define it for me. Come on. Let's go. Define Senator it McCain defined them as the same group. Okay, what about the alt-left that came McCain. charging at them? Excuse me. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is Let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. You had a group, you had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. Go ahead. What you call the alt-left is the same as neo-Nazis? Oh, oh, those people, all of those people, excuse me. I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups. But not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also there because they wanted to protest the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. So, excuse me. And you take a look at some of the groups, and you see, and you know it if you were honest reporters, which in many cases you're not. But many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So this week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? But they were there to protest, excuse me, you take a look the night before, they were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. Infrastructure question, go ahead. Should statues of Robert E. Lee stay up? I would say that's up to a local town, community, or the federal government, depending on where it is located. Are you putting what you're calling the alt-left and white supremacists on the same moral plane? I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other, and they came at each other with clubs, and it was vicious, and it was horrible, and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. <laughs> Sides, sir? You said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Are, are well, I do think there's blame. Video? Yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it. And you don't have any doubt about it either. And, only and, 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 and if you reported it accurately, you would say. Not Kill the started this. They Heather showed up in Charlottesville. They, started, they showed up in Charlottesville Excuse me. to protest. Excuse the me. They didn't put themselves down as you. And you had some very bad people in that group. Voicey here. This is Jim Acosta, the CNN White House correspondent. He's a total dick brain.
but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. All right now, this is the important part, so pay attention. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats. You got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Unfairly, sir. I'm sorry. I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly. No. I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look, they were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day, it looked like they had some rough, bad people neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. Okay, so let me reiterate. He specifically said that he was not talking about the racists, the, the neo-Nazis and all those, those jerks. He said that he was being fair because there were leftists who had their right to, to speak, and he was being fair to them um, because not all of them were uh, Antifa who were, you know, throwing these people who save up their own pee in uh, water bottles and, and toss them at people and stuff. They're just mentally ill. And uh, so he was being fair, and he was saying, look, there are nice people on both sides, that there are people who were opposed to the removal of the monument because it's a thing of history. And then there were people who on the left who uh, wanted the monument to be removed. However, they were not being violent. So this lie has been perpetrated for years and years and years by the fake news media. Uh, and finally it has been admitted that it is not correct. The thing is though, why did it take them so long to do this? And why was it like right before the, the, the stupid debate, right? In which uh, Biden just basically embarrassed himself in front of the whole country. And then there was that, uh, you know, switcheroo and now, you, now, now you're stuck with uh, Kamala who nobody voted for and she came in dead last especially after Tulsi Gabbard kicked her ass in the debates back in uh, what 2019 or so she, she never even made it to the primary and now she's running for president without a single vote and yet these are the same people who prattle on about democracy ridiculous the same corporate media that lied to you about fine people on both sides are the same media corporations that are lying to you about hands up don't shoot about the carl rittenhouse about nick sandman about trump's taxes about hunter's laptop about russian collusion about weapons of mass destruction about 9 11 the list goes on and on and on and on and on so basically they know what trump said yet they lie to you and biden and kamala are hoping that their voters remain completely ignorant about the truth and so they have to lie about what Trump says constantly in order to make him look bad like uh, when when he says uh, 
illegal immigration or illegal immigrants are poisoning the life blood of the country that makes sense but if you just snip 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 and then he says immigrants are poisoning the lifeblood of the country this is a man who has a track record of marrying immigrants right and then there's the same leftists who uh claim to value diversity they're the ones who are making fun of uh, melania's accent right um or that um what's her name this uh this uh chinese woman who is uh an immigrant and she's running against a, a democrat i forget her name but uh, they're always making fun of uh, the the accents of of these people just because they're they're conservative, right? Bunch of hypocrites. So anyhow, um, yeah, they're just completely lying, and um, I didn't even really feel like making this video. I have put this off for many years. I had these uh, these clips saved on my hard drive, and it's just ridiculous that after like seven years or so that this is still being propagated. Uh, uh, Democrats just think that their own voters are stupid and they're counting on them to remain ignorant and stupid in order to get their votes. There's, there's no other explanation for this at all.